the beat of New York. 103.5 KTU. We've got a crowded studio. Yes. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we got the one and only Dr. Oz. Yes. Dr. Oz. I brought my gloves. I brought lubricant. I got it all here. Okay. Well, you know what, Greg T., we're we're getting out of that. People are asking if you're going to give him his annual prostate exam while you're here, Dr. Oz. (laughs) And I think that we're going to do something different at KT. We have always wanted to do something so much fun like that with Dr. Oz. But then everybody's always like, no, maybe we shouldn't. But now over here at KT. Respectful. Yes. I I wanted to have a lot of fun. I wanted to do something. I wanted to come in naked or something. No, that's okay. And Carolina was like, you're not doing that (laughs) here. I'm fine. I, I don't need to see that. Dr. Oz, it's so great to see you. <laughs> you're wonderful on the show as always. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I love Angel doing your show. Out. Oh, you, you're the best. So we have so much to talk to you about. First of all, I want to understand why you did not bring our flu shots. Well, I found out so late I couldn't <laughs> get the flu shot. I would have happily brought it. I oh. give it to a lot of my staff. I give it to folks on the show. Do I, you? Yeah, and I, 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 I like giving the flu shot because yeah. I think people underappreciate vaccines. The crazy thing about this whole argument we're having is people mm-hmm. think they're treated like chattel. They mm-hmm. think they're forced to get a vaccine. It's not about that. Yeah. If you don't want to get a vaccine, I'm fine with that. Uh, I personally think it's unwise. Uh, I don't want to lie on my back for a week and put the flu. No, right. I've had the flu and been hospitalized yeah. for it. And a lot of people think they've had the flu. What they had was, you know, a minor version of something, but it wasn't really the flu. Because when right. you get the flu, you're really, really sick. No, and, absolutely. And as a physician, I don't get much of a choice. I really can't afford to spread it from patient to patient. Of so course. I get the vaccine. We all of us have to in, yeah. the, in the hospital. But you guys in, the, in, 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 in this studio, you're safe, but you're out doing public events so often. Yeah. You're shaking a lot of people's hands. Uh, like I do, if you, Caroline, you've been on my, sh- on my set. If I say shake the hands of 200 people a day, yep. and, I, and one of them has the flu, which is going to be the case, I'm going to spread it to 200 people. Yep. So I try to be the firewall. And all, uh, about half the population gets vaccinated. If more got vaccinated, it would be harder for the virus to spread amongst us. Are we late, Dr. Oz? Because I've heard some people saying, you're late. I haven't gotten mine yet, to be honest no, with you. No, you're not late. Uh, no? In fact, you're never late. Okay. I- even in January, February, you get the vaccine, it still makes sense. However, there, if you're going to get it, it's the same vaccine now as you'll get a month from now. So just okay. get it now and be done with it. Okay, wonderful. Well, now you are going to be at our 7th Annual iHeartRadio Lifestyle Health and Wellness Expo. Greg T. and I have both had yeah. the privilege of being there with you. It is such an informative event. For people who haven't been, tell them like what, what it's all about. So again, it's November 9th. It's all afternoon. Uh, I get to speak for a while mm-hmm. about stuff that matters th- today. So I'll talk about CBD this year. And Oh, um, I want to talk about that. You have a so show many coming questions. up about CBD yeah, too. I do, I do okay. have a show coming up this week on it. But I'm going to talk about uh, CBD and who should get it, who should and mm-hmm. how do you know if it's legit stuff? Yeah. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about some of the uh, the, the food ha- f- fads, that ho- the hottest things coming. Like, for example, there's a, for me, flower power is a big issue. What's flower that? power? What is flower power? There's a, all these new flowers out there. Some are from Teff, which is an African uh, seed. Some of them are from uh, banana flowers. There's what? there's uh, There's a lot of vegetable flowers. And these are actually able to replace traditional old-fashioned wheat flour. Oh, is this like coconut flour? Yeah, co- I've, coconut I've had... flour. Okay, yeah. So, but, but the thing is, is they're not easy to use a lot of these flowers. Mm-hmm. So if you, as the companies get better at understanding what we really need as uh-huh. people trying to eat healthily, you can replace bad flowers with good flowers. So less simple carbohydrates, more nutrients in them, and it tastes great. It's got more of an exotic feel to it. Mm-hmm. In any case, I mean, as an example, so and we'll talk about what you, you know, different ways you can cook. It, it takes you to the good life, gotcha. the life you want to live. What are the steps? Well, how do you eat differently? How do you exercise differently? How do you think differently? Because the big epidemic in America today is loneliness. Yes. And when you come to the Health I Heart Health Expo, you will not be lonely. No. Of course, the music's fantastic. Lots of free stuff. Uh, exercise classes. It's like, look. Why would you not do it? That's what the big question. I was going to say, free stuff always gets people in the door, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, you get to hang out. Unless with you're Dr. going Ross. to a wedding, you should be at the Sheraton on the 9th of November in the afternoon with me. It <laughs> is going to be awesome. And I've gone, like I said, and you you've been there as well. Yeah. It is such an event. You it is learn a great time. So much. You walk away with so much more. Yes, yeah, surprisingly. So surprisingly, <laughs> not surprisingly. Back no, because. Just, Here's the thing. I was shocked. I learned. Not I everybody wants to go to, like, doctors. You know, people avoid the doctor. They don't want to go, but they do go. And then, honestly, when you get there, it's not just like you're sitting there just, like, talking to us. There's so many guest speakers that are up there. So there's a lot more that's going on. So you actually walk out there going, huh, you know what? That really wasn't all that bad. It was pretty informative. It wasn't all that bad. Yeah. What an endorsement, Dr. Seriously, Ross. Let's check go it to out. line 11. William from <laughs> Elmont, New York, is going to save you, Greg T. Uh, he has a question for Dr. Oz. Good morning, William. Uh, good morning, good morning. How are you? We're doing great. So you have a question for Dr. Oz? Yes, uh, Dr. Oz. So I'm a, a, a little bit of an overweight guy. I'm 385 pounds, but I have this uh, stubborn belly fat that just won't go flat. What, what, what can I do to uh, 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 to get rid of the belly? belly? 
I like that question because I've got dad fat right here yeah, in my belly. Great. How yeah, great. How do I, I get rid of this? Yeah, thank you for the call, William. Yes. We're going to answer it right now. Uh, Dr. Oz, how do how do you get rid of that? Is that the cortisol? Is that the, what's happening there in the middle? So uh, Dr. Bermudez knows part of the answer, which is the cortisol. <laughs> so uh, so here, here's the issue. Belly fat happens for two reasons. One is we are stressed, and when we're stressed, we release a hormone mm-hmm. that forces us to eat a lot of food. Now, why would the body do that? Because a thousand years ago, stress was about a famine, not having having enough food. That's that was the major reason you were stressed out. Your family was going to starve to death. Mm-hmm. So you release hormones that make you hungry for things you don't even like and force you to eat too much of it. So people with belly fat, I can almost always guarantee aren't managing their stress that well. That's part one. Part two is the food that we eat can cause us stress. Mm -hmm. Like simple carbohydrates stress out the the metabolic system of the body. They stimulate insulin to go up, uh, which is the hormone that deposits the fat in your belly. So if you eat complex carbs or proteins, that's why the keto diet paleo is so popular because you're not eating simple carbs. Yeah. Then you won't have that hormonal disarray, that, that craziness that messes up your metabolism. And that's why I'm talking about flower power. And again, these are topics that I'm getting getting into in the show this week. I really think it's important for people to stock their pantries with foods that naturally reduce the inflammation and irritation in their body. Whole foods. Whole foods, whole real foods. Foods, foods that come grains. out of the ground, look when they look when you eat them. Right. The eating green is a good example. Meats yeah. actually stress you a little bit. Mm-hmm. So th- th- those kinds of dietary habits will reduce your belly fat. And the reason I care about belly fat is not just because you have that svelte body that you used to have when you were a kid. It's because belly fat specifically leads to high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and, and high blood sugar. The main reasons we die so it's so weird if, I have I, like I legitimately like I I've, I've gotten some some little tummy tucks here and there but uh, the thing is I, no matter what I do no matter how hard I go to the gym like I was there on Saturday I'm doing Wait, like you've you know, had tummy tucks like you've actually had procedures okay, like did I've, you get liposuction I or wanted something? to kind of gloss over that but I had to come well, out and come clean it, well, okay so, go ahead. so yes I've had my lipo right okay. but I still cannot seem to get rid of this dad belly that I call it and I cannot stand it I just don't know what else to do like is there something at the gym that I can do? But you're telling me that I'm stressing and I'm getting it from eating carbs and that's where it's it's coming when, from. When you're stressed and aren't sleeping, yeah. your brain will naturally crave food, especially carbs. He does not mm. sleep, Dr. Oz. He wakes up at 2 o'clock in the morning <laughs> yeah. and he comes here unnecessarily. I have to get show prep done. That's no. <laughs> I, that's I, that, I tell you, this is the same argument I make for people who want to work out in the morning. If you have a choice between sleep and working out, sleep. sleep. If you have a choice between uh, sleep and going to work, you sleep. If you have a choice between sleep and eating, you sleep. If you have a choice between sleep and sex, have sex. Yeah. That's the only exception. <laughs> Good doctor that hey, I know and love. So my wife, Trish, just got diagnosed, and now she has, she has a, she's on this gluten-free diet. Here's the thing that about gluten-free and everything. Years ago, nobody heard of this, and all of a sudden, now it's happening in so many of our friends and relatives and neighbors. Everybody's going, oh, I can't have it. It's gluten. I can't have it. How does that just happen overnight? Trish is in her 40s, and she never had problems. All of a sudden, she went to go get a physical. A lot she of people back. have that experience, yeah. though, T. That's and now funny she just, that you mentioned it. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I'll give you a couple answers, because there are a couple reasons why it's happening. The first is there are actually some infections, like alpha-gal, is a autoimmune response to a tick bite mm-hmm. that we think is linked to some of these intestinal problems people are having. Second thing is folks in, folks have so much inflammation in their body from the foods they're naturally eating, including I think some of the toxins in the environment, that the body wages a civil war in its gut. And when it's waging, waging, waging a civil war and small irritants like gluten get in there, it's a problem. Third, gluten's changed. The wheat has actually changed a little bit since what we originally were harvesting 12,000 years ago. So the way it's manufactured, the way food is actually made, has been changed, and our bodies just cannot uh, adjust it's, to It's this. one of several reasons. But, but the most important is I think a lot of people think they have gluten intolerance, mm-hmm. and they actually have something bigger than gluten intolerance. They are having an issue with the ba- basic foods they're putting in their body. And the, here's the, the problem. When you eat gluten-free, right. they take a, white, a piece of white bread, yeah. right? You take the gluten out of it. Well, gluten is there for a reason. It's a protein that binds the wheat together. You take that out, you got to put something else in there that's synthetic and fake to make up for it, right. which the body doesn't recognize. Right. Yeah. And so now you got a separate problem going on. So I think that if you happen to have a gluten problem, which is... Kind of, you know, pretty common. Sure. Avoid foods that naturally have gluten. 
You can't eat white bread. Right. No, no, she can't. She, there's so many things she cannot have well, now. But no, we, we have to get into it after this. But right. I, I think it's been confirmed. I have a Greg T intolerance. So oh. we have to go ahead and that figure is something right. out. No, that I'm is joking. not We're right. Gonna have more, uh, we have you know, Chris- they have enemas for that now. Oh, That's gosh. You know both what? of you. Both <laughs> of you. You know what? We will get into that. And also, Christina's calling. We'll take more of your calls at 800-245-1035 and more of your texts at 69935 with Dr. Oz next on KTU. You know, we're having, I wish we had, like, Cameras and microphones we do. on. We have cameras. No, because that are there's so much going us. on in the background yeah. while we go to commercials and songs. Mm-hmm. Like we're sitting here talking, and I had no idea, Doctor Oz. You come from a family filled with women. It's just you. We're talking about how we have to be bros to each other. That's we're right. Way overwhelmed. Yeah, because yeah. he wants a bro. He wants Doctor Oz to be his bro. I'm surrounded I, by I, women, Doctor Oz. I have my wife and two daughters. Then I come here, and it's a room full of, full of women. I have no bros. So if you could be my bro, we could like do a bro hand. Shake and everything. Oh my goodness, we team up. The, the woman yeah. wouldn't understand what we were doing. Yes. We, no, I think we, we speak can in single it out. syllables. <laughs> nice. We can have like much. Our, our own uh, segment, Dr. Oz's Greg <laughs> T segment. We're just being, we're doing bro talk. Wait, but, I do want to ask Dr. Oz, are, what are you, do you get into Halloween at all? Like, what oh, are you yes. going to be for Halloween? Can, can you reveal it to us? Yeah, so I, I was unwrapping. So the kids have been ordering. They sit with my wife and they just plan this out. I and mean, we have the grandkids with us right now. Aww. So I, a little John. It was just turned four this Does week. Does he say yeah? yeah no, <laughs> he's, he's little just, John. Just right, <laughs> little just John. That's right, John boy. <laughs> no, he's got a little uh, a fox suit. So I asked him, "What? What's the? F- you know, what is this about?" And he goes, "What does the fox say?" That's the song, bing, right? Bing, yeah. bing, 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 bing. Bing, bing. That's his Halloween deal. <laughs> that's adorable. That, walk around. Yeah. I, you know, I tell you, I'm thinking of going like Mad Max. Ooh, Ooh. I like that. Little goth. Yeah, 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 I like that. I can hide in the because sh- I'm, you know, I can't actually trick or treat with the kids. They won't let me. I'm Pictures not cool. or it didn't happen, Doctor Oz. I'm sorry. You can't go trick or treating with them. Oh, I do, but I have to sort of hide in the shadows behind them. They don't want me actually walking up with them because they, they want to be big kids. Yeah, they want to go by themselves without me, you know, lumbering over them. See, Greg, but T I wanted... like that costume. That's like a bro costume. Exactly. T, yeah. didn't you want to ask what kind of a candy giver is Doctor Oz? Well, that's I, I am <laughs> curious. Like, and when I was a kid going out <laughs> trick or treating, you always knew like who was giving out the good stuff. You know, it was always like a really nice. Nice big home, like a like a mansion kind of thing. Yeah. So I, I don't know where you live, but I'm imagining that you don't have a small house. You have a really nice big home. <laughs> so you would be one of those houses that I'd run to. So what does a celebrity like yourself? What do you give away for uh, Halloween? Are you she apple slices? Stop it! No, you don't. <laughs> you are, not, are you the raisin household? That's right. A raisin apple slices. Yogurt raisins. Oh, not a chance. I am gonna hit your house of, up on a no spoon way. Full of yogurt. You're a fool. No, he gives out Greek yogurt. No. I'm toilet paper in your trees, yeah, man. Yeah. So, so as you described, Greg T, yeah. I, I have a, a nice house in New Jersey, yeah, and I love the neighborhood. And in, it's a you know it's a, a these it's like a fertility clinic. Our neighborhood, everyone oh has God. kids, yeah. <laughs> and so we decorate the house up crazily. You do, we, yeah. We have all kinds of. It's basically a theme park. The house. Oh, that's amazing. There. And it's a long driveway to get to the house. So the hallway, there's scary little things, and so the kids have to walk up there, and their parents. It's a whole get mo, and they get oh, that. That's and they, cool. have to, they start. They come in packs. They start yeah. chanting. Yeah. Yeah. Do hug. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. We've got to go next year. Please come. It's it's a festival. So that oh, I, we, that's so and awesome. And I learned instead of giving single big uh, uh, treats, we give uh-huh. lots of small ones. But they take a shovel, really. Yeah. They shovel them out into literally with like a plastic shovel into their bags. They, they almost always run out. And I buy. I'm talking about garbage tins of really? candy. What? And usually, I don't know if you've ever been there. I, I buy. 10, 10, 30, we pretend we're asleep because yeah, yeah, I'm out yeah. of candy. Right, right. Oh, it's like the real OzFest yeah, uh, every real. Halloween. Oh, yes. It's I'm like gonna for call real. It that. You should. I Oz don't know if you'd be allowed to. Why Wait. didn't I brand that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. Do we have Christine still on the line? I don't know if she hung up. No, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Christine, you have been so patient and holding. Uh, Dr. Oh. Oz is here. What, what was your question for him? Good morning. I'm so excited to be on the radio. Good morning. Uh, I'm 44 years old. Um, I've struggled with my weight my entire life um and i was diagnosed with hypothyroid a few years ago and i'm finally in the normal range with my numbers but i'm really still struggling um with weight loss i've been doing low carb for about like literally um, two months and i've only dropped about five pounds i was wondering if there was a certain type of um diet to follow for hypothyroid or if there's something i should stay away from or 
So um, let, me, let me walk you through a couple of thoughts. First, I'm glad you got di- your actual thyroid diagnosed because it's very difficult to, to lose weight if your thyroid is not working. It's the metabolic stimulant to the body. And there are diets that help the thyroid, but you should probably be on thyroid support if uh, if you're not already. I assume you are. Yes. Okay, good. So let's focus on what might work. First of all, five pounds of weight loss is a lot of weight loss. People think, oh, I'll lose 10 pounds in a week. I can tell you the only way to do that is get an amputation. Oh, geez. It's not happening. <laughs> People can't lose. To, if you might lose water weight mm-hmm. in, in a week yeah. like that, but you're not going to lose true fat weight that quickly. Five pounds is about the most you can lose a, a fat weight in two months. So you're actually on a good program, oh, so good. don't lose content. Here's what okay. the key for you to focus on. There is no way for you to stay on a diet the rest of your life. So you need to eat food that you love that happens to be good for you. So you should focus right. on taking that low-carb diet and modifying it so you actually enjoy being on it. But if you can stay on it, uh, I don't know how much overweight you are, but if you can stay on that diet for a year, on average, most people lose 15 to 20 pounds, which is really all you have to lose for most of, of, the, of America. You lose those 15, 20 pounds, you're back in your playing weight. Your hormones get better, your, uh, your drives for almost everything you want to do in life gets improved, and th- that's actually what you're looking for anyway. Well, the thing is, I'm not having a hard time following it. This is actually very easy for me to follow, um, and I'm not really hungry, but the numbers are not reflected in the scale, which is really, which, you know, is, is kind of, you know, the, the, it's disappointing. The faster you lose weight, the faster you rebound back up again and yo-yo. Mm-hmm. You want to lose right. weight slowly. The weight plan you're on, I can tell you just from what you're saying, is if you truly lost five pounds, you're on the right program because that's a lot of weight loss. You're not finding it difficult to stay on it. I've had countless right. guests on my show. They always tell me the same story. I tried diet after diet after diet. I finally found one that was easy, and then all of a sudden <laughs> it got, I, I lost all the weight. And you, you're going to lose it slowly but surely, but you won't gain it back, which is all you care about. Hmm. Well, okay. thank, you, okay. thank you so much thank for the call, you. Christine. We appreciate it. You know what I found, Dr. Oz, that as I get older, I used to be able to drop like three pounds like that. And now as I'm getting into my 40s, it is more and more difficult. That metabolism is working against well, you. Well, Christine She's pointed right. it out. She's 44 years old. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're when you start losing estrogen, people worry about menopause, mm-hmm. you also lose testosterone. Okay. And testosterone is the one is the hormone that keeps the muscle mass where it is. And without muscle mass, Mass, you're not a metabolic furnace anymore. You can't burn through calories. Yeah. So anything you eat, any transgression you make, an extra couple sips of beer, a little cake here with your friends, that all begins to add up because you don't have the muscle mass to burn it off like you normally That's would have. Sure. Well, not me. I have enough testosterone. I got hair on my yeah. chest, Doctor Oz. Can you, you check your testosterone? <laughs> no, but I think that that you're describing. Do you that have to low T? I think I might have low oh, testosterone. Oh my goodness, low T T. Yeah, yes. yo, low, low T T. I don't might have I, that. You no know low T T? Well, yo, you know me. No, no, low T. That's what I got. Dr. Oz, I do want to get into some of your shows. If you guys are not watching Dr. Oz, you are missing out on so many things. Not only are you still teaching us how to obviously lose weight, how to be better with our health, but also you're doing these investigative reports that are just so incredible. I want to talk to you, though, about a big burning question. Can you give us any more information about CBD? I feel like there's so much out there. There's a lot of questions. People are wondering whether or not it's safe for them, even for younger kids. People just don't understand what exactly CBD really is and what it can do for them. Well, CBD is uh, today's topic, actually. Okay, Today we're talking about avocados, Okay, which is just to get past that real quickly. You know, People aren't sure it's good or bad. We're going to lay it out and t- tell, you what, tell you what's going on, including this new giant avocado, which is five pounds. Wow. Really? I mean... It's like a salsa for the neighborhood. I love I love avocado toast. Yeah, he's serving that at Ozfest. Yeah, but yes, the, okay. The guac would be uh-huh. great. Uh, but, uh, but CBD has become an issue because, uh, and it's the number one question I'm getting asked these yeah. days. So we decided to dedicate some time today to the biggest questions. Like, does it help you sleep? Does right. it help with aches and pains? How about my mood? And it turns out that CBD probably works for all three of those things. But, but, this is a big but. When we actually go back and test the products themselves, mm-hmm. most are fake. Really? Oh, wow. They either have nothing in them, literally, or they are they're so little of, right. the, of the real true ingredient that it can't possibly work. And I So who are the good companies to you? Because well, I gonna... hear so many all mm-hmm. the time being advertised. I don't know which one it is that that's the best one to, to use. I'm going to walk you through the ones that I that I think make sense. Again, I, I have no relationships with CBD companies, so okay. I try to stay mm-hmm. you know, I- immune from being influenced. But I'm going to share with everybody the ones that I like. But i got to say a couple of things. First, the reason it's so much fraud, fraud is it's really expensive to, 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 to make CBD. It's really? actually much more expensive 
expensive to make CBD than pot. Really? And this future, I think, will be a little bit of marijuana pot with CBD. Oh, okay. It potentiates it. You won't need quite as much CBD, so it'd be more affordable for the average person. But I can tell you right off the bat, if you're not, if, if it's not costing you 30, 40, 50 bucks, it's probably not real CBD. Mm. Just the pricing is like that. And the other thing is go to the websites of the companies you're interested in, look to see if they've been certified, if they actually have any kind of certificate of what's in them. Right. Most of these companies are just marketing companies, and here's the problem. The marketing companies have no cost of goods, right? They're not buying any stuff because they're not putting real CBD in there. Mm -hmm. So they can take all their money and use it for advertising. Oh my gosh! So the that more they is, advertise, wow. right? The more I get worried about it. That's and right. Nice packaging, you know, all this stuff going on, and yet they're not spending money on the real product, right? So they actually can make it for cheaper, and then they drive out the good guys. That's and that, a whole big right. business. My goodness, yeah, that that's is what's crazy. Happening. Yeah, I, you know what? I actually spent money on a CBD cream, and I thought, oh, this is going to be amazing. It's awesome. My husband looked at the ingredients. Right. He goes, "This is Ben Gay." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because you basically just spent thirty dollars on a thing. Of but Carolina, gay. That, that's the big issue now. If your husband hadn't said that, you'd think this doesn't work. Yeah. And in reality, maybe it would have worked. We don't know for sure. They, they haven't been good clinical trials uh, on right. CBD. But what if it would have worked and you don't try it anymore because you got a bad product once? What if you can't sleep and CBD could have helped you? Right. right. But because you don't think it worked because you bought sawdust last time right. and didn't and found it to be ineffective, you sure. throw away the whole. Uh, field, and that's the biggest risk. That, that, that happened with vaping, and I think it's, it's parallel. The vapors did not get together and clean up the business. Mm -hmm. So half the vape of the $10 billion business is fake. Right. A lot of the fake stuff, I think, was poisoning people. Right. People died, and mm -hmm. now everyone says vaping's bad for you. Whereas if the vaping guys who had good products had gotten together and said... We're going to make clean products. We're going to police ourselves. And, and regulate, by the way, yeah. And yeah. government, come in here and regulate because we can't do it by ourselves. We would have avoided multiple deaths and maybe saved an industry. Oh, so what oh is gosh. going on? I don't understand. This you're, you're touching on so many uh, so many issues here. Like Even like the word organic. Like Everybody's putting the word organic on everybody's food. So people go shopping and they see the word organic and they think, oh, it's going to be healthy. But that's not uh, a reality either. There's so many like fake organic foods that are even out there. They're just using the word. Or, or they'll have 12 ingredients. Ingredients. Right. One of the ingredients is organic. Yeah. And, say, and then or, it's know. already, they get the stamp of approval. That so it's why organic. is nobody policing any of these things? Well, the U.S. government always believed that manufacturers, because they were big manufacturers, would do a good job and be honorable to what they're writing on their package. It's right. illegal to not to lie on your packaging. But people have gotten very clever of gaming the system. I think, again, the big boys have to come together in every industry yeah. and say, we're going to be tougher on our industry right. and actually invite in regulation so they get a little support. But it's most evident in high profit spaces. Right, vaping is very profitable. Huge Doesn't right now. cost Huge. that much yep. to make it, and and you know uh, cigarettes don't cost much to make cigarettes. It's Correct. all the the, the, the the perceived value. CBD, same thing. And uh, uh, that we're talking about these ideas because they're the ones that end up catching up to us. The mm -hmm. thing about avocados, go back for one second, is yeah. when it comes to a nature-made package, right. right, a real piece of fruit, they can't cheat you. Right, right, If right. it says organic avocado, yeah. it has to be organic. Gotcha. Yeah. But when you buy a packaged product to save time and money, and in, they put a little bit of avocado in there, but 12 other ingredients that you don't know what they are. Avocado chips. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, right. I, it's like basically a potato chip with green coloring. Well, yeah, that's what I'm you know saying. On with that them. note, Dr. Oz, my takeaway, men, it is illegal to lie about your packaging. You take <laughs> oh, that home you with it. you, okay? <laughs> but, Mine is a big package. Dr. Big Oz. Package. Low TT. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Low TT, and I love you. Thank you so much. Don't forget the 7th Annual iHeartRadio Lifestyle Health and Wellness Expo. It's on November 9th. We'll have more information for you at ktu.com. You can always check out our favorite Dr. Oz. That's Fox my bro. Five, New York. Oh, yeah, cool down. That's my and, bro uh, now. Also, Dr. Oz, anything else you want to push? Oh, Ozfest at his house. Yes. Go and get, yes, we'll go get Halloween. Halloween candy. And get, tune in to Fox 5. We're 1 o'clock every day. Have a fun with us. And write, lo, write me notes. I actually answer them on social yes, media. Yes, Dr. Yeah. Oz, you're the best. Thank you so Love much you. for coming over to KTU. From the Beat of New York. 103.5 KTU.